Hello, this is the fact animated pl it controls plugin. I'll go into it real quick. It should be updated, so if you search it, you'll find it. You go download it, enable it. Once you've installed it, you go turn on in your plugins, and you get this tab. This tab will come in in a second. I shall explain that, but first. When you turn it on, it'll create this folder and these items. These are necessary for it to manage the animations themselves. And this stuff related to that folder. For now, I'll just do an example, like, let's say, just an example scene. Where, let's say, we want to make an animated control or object. So we have animated boxes, round containers animated from the center for the round container uh, slide in grids, normal grids the difference between from center and normal is that turning, toggling this one will move the items in and out from the middle I will show that real quick by just adding a bunch of panels as you can see the size of the object does matter it automatically scales in editor, it doesn't do the animation, but let's say I have a test scene to show it right here. I'll show the others as well. As you can see, you can tell it to swap things around, move things around. In this side, they are all rotated to face outward from the middle. In this one, I toggle them to always simply face straight up, or whatever direction you want them to. Animations are later. As you can see, you can bind to the events such as on hover, on when you stop hovering, focusing, unfocus, and input events. And sliding grid, as you can see, also works. Where it lets you create a grid with a given size. If I look at the grid itself, you'll notice that the direction that it slides from is a variable letting you do things like this. But now, it'll slide like that. You can change those values however you want, and it's based on the full size of the container. Item spacing is based, includes the size of the item. Since they're 40 big, you'll notice that when it's 40, it'll be like that. And expand direction is in which direction it'll try to fill in the container first. AKA, it will always try to fill the full vertical or full horizontal length when possible. Beyond there, if I were to go over and check this, you notice this says horizontal. If I make it vertical, and let's say adjust anything, all the items are now put in a vertical order. If I go back to horizontal, you'll see that they're now back in space as they were before. Now back to the example. As you can see, this is the do rotation. It won't show an editor, but if I, let's say, run this scene, they're rotated. If I disable that, they point the, the initial direction. Initial rotation is from the center where they will be placed. So if I were to set the initial rotation to pi times, let's say, 0 0.125, so 1 eighth of pi, it should rotate them a bit around the direction. As you can see, they're now slightly offset from where it considered to stop. And if I change that again, you'll see that again. Now, from there... I will go into actually creating a thing. I'm going to change this out and put in, for now, let's do a animated box container. Let's do a full rect and change this to a control so we can actually have it there. Now this I will make horizontal.
and let's put in some objects. It doesn't matter what you put in. It prefers control nodes, but there's nothing stopping you from throwing any item you want in. Now from there, now that these are all here, let's add some more. Let's say I want to create an item function script. Item function scripts are, if I go into here for the example script, there should be, oh no, the script is not there, I will just check from here. You will notice that I am on hover and unhover, updating the animated item. Why well, I'm telling that item to set the stacked position and stacked scale. The reason it does that is because I am storing two types of positions and scales. The stacked one is meant to be used by you to control it separately. And there's a second one used to control via animations and positioning. So it will keep the object scale separated from the scale you set there. I.e. if you have your thing at a scale of 2 and you scale it by 1.2 times in stack scale, it will be bigger. But when you set it back to 1, it will still be at 2, because you never changed the original scale itself. Anyway, I have... So, if I want to do something, I can do... Things like that. Where I can set these, or item.set stack to rotation. Let's set it to, let's say... 1 eighth of pi. And over the time frame of half a second, with a transition of elastic. Now, if I were to go over here and look, you'll notice, over the half second, they run that transition. But because I'm not changing it manually, it will stay like that rotation, unless told otherwise, by some sort of action such as being put into a new container. Which is why, if you want to make sure that it fixes itself, I would recommend setting the stacked rotation and everything else to the initial values in the unhovered function as well. That way, now when you unhover, it will also return to normal. And from there, I will now get into the tab. Tab is fax animations, and as you can tell, there's a lot that it does. I will start with this. I, we have a code block system, where you have the initial position, scale, rotation, Index and total items, rotation, item origin, position, and size for everything. Item origin is to say, not getting the position of the item globally or where it is in the container, but where the container is trying to keep it by default. AKA, when I run, that, when I run this animation, this is the item origin, right here. But when I run it, even though they're over here now, the origin is here. So whenever I run it, it will always move back to the correct spots. Item index and total count, as you might guess, is from zero to total items. And you can use that to get the number to properly rotate things in circles and whatnot. I'll create a quick function in the animation just to show it off. We have position, rotation, scale. All of these will run simultaneously, aka, if I have a set position, set rotation, set position, and a set scale, all of these will run at the same time, but this will run after the first set position, no matter what order I connect them in. As l if you want to make it wait for all three of these to be done, like let's say there's a weight of 1, a weight of 2, and a weight of 3, 
This will happen after this one is finished. So let's say we want this one to happen after these all are finished. Instead of just delaying, we can actually add sync parameters. Sync parameters will force everything before it to be finished before it will continue to the next posi to the next updates. So now, unless all three of these are done, it will wait and then run the next rest. Beyond that, we have math functions. A vector 2 where you can decompose and recompose the vector. Variables. Item metadata. Which is to say, you can get metadata from individual items if you decide to add any to it and set a default value for what that metadata will be. It has to be a float or an integer, though, as everything in here is expecting that. It allows connecting vector 2s to floats, floats to vector 2s. Anyway, now that I've shown that off, I will do a quick, just simple one where it will set the position relative to itself by adding the index to the y position and this is the item's current position item origin as i've said is the actual start position so if I do it this way, it will run from where it's supposed to start at. And if I do it this way, it will run from wherever it currently is. From here, I can now tell it to run this. Let's do quad quadratic. And let's save the chain's name as example0 and save it. Now, if I go here, you'll notice it's compiles it as a script like this. This is so you can actually see what everything is doing. And if I go into animation groups, this is where the fun happens. I will create a group, group 0. Now let's add example 0 to it. Exa and then compile it. Now, if we go over here into the facts compiled, you notice group 0 has a GD script file now. This GD script file is is updated whenever you recompile. You just need to make sure it is not open in the script editor if you want it to update properly. From there, you can actually, if you want to, exit out of those and simply throw in a normal script file. So like, let's say I wanted to do a script of custom animation action. It would have to be a ref counted, and then we can just do whatever it is, and you can then code whatever you want it to do, so long as it still is a function and has all the passed in parameters and would run otherwise correctly. From there, I can then also add something such as print, yeah, this just, just works, and add it. As you can see, you can select the methods from it, and from there, if I now compile and check out the compiled group, it has the function in it. Then, from there, as you've seen over here, we have the animations. So I'm going to take the box container and give it group 0. Now, let's say on input if input dot is dot just or event dot is pressed and not event dot is echo and event dot as text equals, let's say, just h. Then we will take 
the animated box right there and tell it to call the method to play the animation with the given name. If I tell it to play animation, whatever it is, then when I press H, One second. It's not running that. I do not know why. I'm just going to put it into a normal button. So the animation button just runs this instead. Now when I press test animation. Alright, whatever it is isn't the name. You have to name the action itself still. As you can see, the names are stored over here. So you can custom name it like, let's say this one is now called I made a mistake. Because, uh, why not? I can save it. And you'll notice, it's now called I made a mistake. So if I were to tell it to play animation I made a mistake, you'll notice now, when I press this button, Every item is moved down by its item index. And every single one of them will say, yeah, this just works. Because it runs on each item, not on the container itself. I hope that is an effective explanation. Feel free to tell me if you feel like I did not explain anything well enough, or you need support, or any new features you'd like me to add. Till then.